Hello and welcome to another SciFest Movie Talk episode. So, in this episode, I will be discussing 2019's Supernatural Horror Pet Cemetery, which is the second adaptation of the Stephen King horror novel of the same name. So, given that the film does have a few twists and turns, and there may be a couple of spoilers in this review, so if you don't want to hear these, please switch off now. But Please do come back once you've watched the film and, and let me know what you thought. I'd love to know. Um, so, the film is not a sequel, um, nor related to the original 1989 film. The first, of course, to be based on the book. Or, neither it is a follow-up to that film's 1992 sequel. It's basically a completely new retelling of the book, stylized for a more modern audience. So, it is actually probably... One of the very, very few rare occasions when I can actually say I have read the book, but albeit not for a very, very long time. I've also seen the original movie and its sequel, but again, not for quite some time. So I can't really remember uh, all of it. I can remember bits, but, you know, not much. From my, therefore, sort of vague recollection, I think I would be right in saying that the new film, uh, that of course is the subject of this review, takes a few artistic liberties um, with the story, mainly for shock value, I would add, and basically to lead you off the scent. However, the overall plot and premise does remain the same, and there are a number of similarities to the original movie. And whilst I don't think it's a true adaptation of the book, being only based on the ideas and the characters the book portrays, what I do think is that it manages to capture some of the essence of the book uh, quite well, given it is a sound like a dark and broody style. So, the film sees us introduced to Lewis Creed, um, a doctor as played by Jason Clarke, and his wife, Rachel, uh, as played by Amy Smets, and his two young children, Ellie and Gage, as played by Jetty Lawrence and Hugo and Lucas Lavoy, respectively, and who moved to Ludlow in Maine in order to escape the country for a quieter life. Of course, Maine being the setting for many a Stephen King story, given that's where he obviously comes from, uh, it does seem quite the spooky place. Um, their house is situated alongside a road which serves as an access road to some kind of industrial operation. Every now and again, without much warning, a juggernaut of a truck will go flying by at breakneck speeds. Very dicey situation to be in. Bet you can't guess where this film goes. Um, well, one unfortunate day, the family's cat, Church, is found dead uh, by the father and in an attempt to shield their daughter from the unpleasantness of knowing her cat is dead, he lies and basically says that the cat has run away, with the intent on burying the cat in the pet cemetery that very night. His neighbour, Judd, as played by uh, John Lithgow, who has st oh, basically struck up quite a bond with Ellie, takes pity on the family and opts to show Lewis another place to bury the cat, which is beyond the pet cemetery. Little does the Doctor know that there's just something about this place which has the ability to bring the dead back. But they ain't quite right. They're not the same. And Judd fails to tell the Doctor this. Unfortunately, this isn't the last tragedy to befall the family, which is where the real horror starts. Uh, and with the pull of the land beyond the pet cemetery becoming too much of a temptation. So... I thought it was quite a decent horror film, all told. It wasn't too full of jump scares, although it had a couple. Um, and it wasn't very gory. Um, quite a lot was implied, which was harrowing enough when you know what was coming with the inevitable death of the child. Its character base was quite small, and so its its overall death toll was not immense. It's not a slasher flick, uh, flick, sorry, flick uh, by any stretch of the imagination. More sort of a psychological assault, I would say. Most of the intrigue for me, personally, came from knowing what was going to happen uh, and just waiting to see how they designed it to play out. One thing that did get to me um, a, a bit was that throughout the film it appeared as though quite a lot of the scenes were made to feel eerie and spooky even when they probably weren't. For instance, there's a scene um, with some children from the town marching through the forest to bury a pet in the real pet cemetery, not the soured one, uh, which brings things back from the dead. It's designed to look quite macabre and sinister, with each decked out in what would appear to be some kind of ritualistic attire, donned with animal head masks to boot. 
matching along to the beat of a drum, of course being very solemn but also very mysterious and quiet. They don't speak and don't interact and we never actually find out who they were. All of this makes it feel like it's part of the plot, like it's linked to it in some way. And I was expecting, to be fair, to find out more about this ceremony and how it connected. But it's not. Of course, the real pet cemetery isn't scary or spooky, but it's actually, oh, well, it's certainly made to feel that way in the film. It is, of course, what lies beyond which deserves that accolade. It was eerie for eerie's sake. To be fair, children burying their pets is a very normal thing to do, and, and to bury them in a pet cemetery that they've made, looked after and attended to over many generations is a very nice thing to do. Um, it might have made the alternative pet cemetery more forsaken, perhaps, if they didn't make this one uh, more of what it was. I'm just saying. Furthermore, the actual graveyard in which the dead come back to life is a bit of a trick from the main pet cemetery itself. I can't remember how far it was in the film, the other film, the original one. I'm not sure. But it just took them that long to walk there. It could have been in a different state. Um, I found it hard to imagine that a simple wall of logs and twigs, um, as was the boundary between the two areas, would act as an effective deterrent. Um, was it that far away in the original film? I, said, I can't quite remember. Please do let me know. Comments below. It'll be a while before I get to watch it, I'm sure. Another thing. So I'm not sure on the time span of the film um, that it was never made clear. But it does appear to be at least a month or so from when the Creed family moved into their new home. Now, I'll tell you what, given those trucks, putting up a fence would be the first thing on my to-do list with two young children in tow. Um, but I'm just being picky, but I mean, there wouldn't have been a movie anyway. Anywho, the movie does have some twists and turns along the way, which I thought were quite nice touches in the main. I, I, I didn't go into this thinking it was going to be a carbon copy of the book. They very rarely are anyway these days. And to be fair, I was hoping that they would add their own kind of stamp to it. You know, it's all been done before, so let's have something new. Which they did do in parts, um, but apart from one genuine and harrowing, shocking twist, most of the elements were either just not carried forward, as I've, as I've already discussed, or not strong enough to be distinguishable from the original 1989 movie. I think given the premise of the story, there were other tales to tell. It might have been nice to have seen a completely new contemporary telling of the story with different characters altogether to distinguish it completely as an original movie in its own right. I did find that there was quite an emotional aspect to the movie in terms of the bond which grew between Ellie and Judd, which made what happened in the movie all the more heartbreaking, which is something the film did do very well, I thought. Quite a beautiful friendship kind of develops between the two, with Judd declaring that he has given her a piece of his heart, something he hadn't done since the death of his wife. Which, of course, is kind of the driving force behind Judd showing Lewis where to bury the cat in order to save Ellie's feelings, despite his better judgement. It's this relationship which is central to some of the further elements which play out later in the movie. I don't want to say too much in this respect, just be ready for what comes. Um. In fact, the acting from and the, the on-screen chemistry between John Lithgow, Judd and Jetty Lawrence, Ellie, of course, was one of the highlights of the film for me. The level and the range of emotions they both portrayed throughout the film it is outstanding. However, that from Jason Clarke, who plays Lo uh, Lewis, not so much. Um, dare I say, he pretty much acted every scene the same. There wasn't the same kind of range of emotion for me from him, given how central his character was to the story. But yeah, overall, it is a decent take on the Stephen King story, if but perhaps a fairly mediocre horror when all's told. I wouldn't be expecting to jump out of your seat. I would say it's certainly worth a watch. It's nothing outstanding or groundbreaking, uh, and it seems too eerie for eerie's sake at times, but it's not one of the worst Stephen King adaptations. Just don't go in thinking it will be a carbon copy of the book, expect a few different twists, and turns along the way, and, and you'll be okay, I think. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope to see you again at SciFest Movie Talk. If you've enjoyed the episode, please do leave a like. Please do consider hitting that subscribe button for more uh, movie reviews, trailer reactions, and, and other kind of movie-related content. 
But overall, yes, thank you for watching. I hope to see you again. Goodbye.